everybody, it's me, Jason Gass. Tonight I'm Brewing Solutions with the Car Guy Coffee Podcast. Let's, Let's brew! brew. Come That's on. right. Car guys and car gals, welcome to the Car Guy Coffee Podcast. This is Lou Ramirez, the car guy. This is Frelin Arts, a subprime hero. And today we are here with our guest, the inventor. The inventor. The, <laughs> yes, the inventor of Next Cell. It is the most powerful dealership tool in the world. You better get you some. You better, you better get you some. He's also been in the car business for well over 30 years. And this gentleman is somebody that I look, look up to as a inspiration, as a mentor. I'm looking forward to becoming friends with him today. This is Jason Garris. Now, Jason, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I know that it's late. We're here late tonight, and we're kind of running a little bit late, but we appreciate you staying with us, smiling and joking around before this. We had some great convo before this got started. But, man, we got some more great convo coming up. Now, we do this thing called the five-liner. The five-liner. And the five-liner is five questions that I'm going to ask you. It's very simple. It's just like a five-liner when you're just getting a quick little five-liner from a customer. I'm going to ask you five questions really quick. You're going to answer them to the best that you can. Take as long as you want or as short as you want. Just give me the best answer that you feel. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. All right. Get ready. Get ready. I can. All right. So the first question I ask, I ask everybody that I sit down with because I really love to know what everybody's purpose is. Everybody has a why. We've kind of talked about this a little bit before, and you mentioned how people have to have that. What is, in particular for you, when you wake up every day, instead of staying and hitting that snooze and sleeping until 10, what gets you to say, you know what, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to crush the day? What is your why? Uh, my why. Um, so when I get up in the, when I get up, uh, in the morning, uh, first thing I do is I open my eyes and I ask why I even got up to begin with. But um, <laughs> what is my why? Um, you know, everyone has a different why. Um, and, uh, my why is about me personally. It's a deep personal, um, it's a deep personal game, uh, for me. It's a game of, uh, I, I challenge myself. Um, it's a challenge. I, I like to, um, to, I, I like to, I like challenges. I like to th- be thrown a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, Someone, most people would say, what are you talking about? You're like, been on a challenge, right? Well, what I like to do is um, it always seems that whatever challenge I'm ever thrown, I always seem to win. Um, so so what, it's, it's funny. It's funny. So, the, so the, my why is a challenge of, of winning that challenge. And then if I don't win... What is the reason that I'm not winning? But then, but then the reason for my why is that I'm making money. Mm-hmm. I'm making money in this challenge. That 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 again, I, I don't get wrapped up in the money. It's all of a sudden I'm making money in it. So so the the the, the challenge is not the money. The challenge. Is is everything that is around the is around it? it the, the money is is is, is going to come. Mm-hmm. It, the the challenge is, you know, what can I do today that's going to be so incredible? And can I pull it off? And then can I get it done today? And everybody tries to get the things done in the day. And uh, a lot of times, I don't sleep because I'm excited about tomorrow. Completing and. Uh, and if those that love what they do, yep. they usually can't sleep because they're excited about tomorrow because they did not finish what they did today. Um, it's still incomplete. It's still incomplete. And um, you can't do enough in the one day. To, to And so my why is to fulfill the challenge and to win and to go out of this world with a legacy mm. with exactly the words that you just said that I inspire you that that if I inspired you, then how many other people have I inspired besides you? Oh, right. And uh, 
That's my why. My why is the challenge of doing great things, mm. but while I'm doing it, making a boatload of money, right? <laughs> making a boatload. If I can make a boatload, yeah. throw it in, you know, and throw as much money as they can. Throw. I don't care what you make. But, but at the same time, gaining great people that, that really do believe in you, really believe in you, I'm not talking about fakes. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the people who really believe in you and really support you. Because everybody has those people that really believe in them and really support them. See, and that's the my why. My why is about the challenge of winning, and, and it's not about winning it because it, it's, you know what, you gain by losing anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you gain more by losing. You gain by losing. You mm-hmm. gain so much by losing. Um, so my what is that? You know, that's generally my why. You know, most people say, "Oh, my wife, my family, my kids, my wife, my daughter." You know, of course, my wife. I love my kids. I love my. You know, I get it. I mean, I have, what do you think? Of course, you know, we didn't bring them in this world. To, you know, mm-hmm. you know, we love her. You know, everyone's got their why. You know, and my why is um, it's a challenge and that challenge of of of. De- of, of a game that I'm going to play myself. And, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to bank on anybody else because I don't trust anybody else. And I won't. I, I, I can't count on anybody else. Don't worry about it. Because if you think you can count on anybody, then you're completely wrong. Okay? You've got to get that mindset out that you can't count on anybody, that you've been dropped like a deer in the woods in the field, and you've got to be able to make it out on your own. And if you can't make it out on your own, i got a problem. You're going to have a serious problem in this world. Okay? You know, if you think, if you think, that you're going to make it, you're, you're asking for it. Because because those that are in the dealership world, right, those that really know the business, you're in it alone. You've been alone. And the best can make it alone without any help whatsoever. They make it. And those are the ones that are they're always going to win. Mm-hmm. Well, so the right. challenge. The challenge. Man, I love it. It's the challenge. The challenge. It's the challenge. It's you love the unknown. You love going into things that make you uncomfortable. Because you, you, so you br- embrace the uncomfortable. And, and that's something that is so powerful when you can do that. Because a lot of people are scared to death of being uncomfortable. They really are. I love it. That's when I wake up, man, I can't, I, if when I'm too uncomfortable and I don't like it, I like doing something that makes me go, man, I got to get this done today. I got to do this. I got to move here. And I, I love being, in constant chaos, but yet being in control of that chaos, if that makes sense. You, you know how uncomfortable I am being in a suit at 11 o'clock at night? Listen to <laughs> 11 o'clock at night, I've got a suit on, i got my underwear on. Underneath. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm Me in too. My underwear. Are you wearing underwear? <laughs> That's why we do the podcast the way we do the podcast. If we're up yeah. at night, we're as comfortable as we can be, and we can just speak it out. Because yeah. we spend all day. I don't know how long, know how long it's going to talk, Lou. That's why I got two cups of coffee. I <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, yes. man, that's what's up. That's, that's, what, that's, that's exactly, exactly. That's car guy coffee kind of guy there. And, and with that, I mean, that kind of an attitude is exactly why we love finding people that are like you that we can actually get with and hear what it is that motivates you because not everybody is the same. No. Many people, you are 100% correct. Majority, I would say about 90, 80% of our guests have said are my kids, my family. I know that that's part of the why on us as well. And the truth is when, when your, your kids grow up and they grow out as ours are doing, Fred has a graduator coming up right behind another graduator yeah. that, that I have. I have one that's graduated that's right fine. now. The one that's graduating right now was a lot like you. She was born premature inside of an incubator. We were told for the, to expect for the worst. And when it was her fighting and fighting and everybody just standing there, it was her by herself in there fighting with the will to live, just like you, just like you mm. overcoming those, those obstacles and those challenges oh. completely on your own for the moment. But inside of that, I would also say, brother, we're not alone. You're not alone. You're not going to be alone inside of this. Can you make it out of the woods alone? Absolutely. 100% you can. You can make it so out of the woods. So can I, woods. right? But, but we do need each other, and we, do, we are better with each other. There are so many people that we fuse together with. I, I did a live today talking about how 
trees that you can actually see the root system of trees that grow inside of a great forest uh, system, they get fused together where nobody, it doesn't look like they're connected. But down beneath in what's deep, the deep parts, not the shallow stuff. You know what I mean? They don't get connected on the shallow end. They get connected on the deep end. You gotta be deeper. That's family type roots. You know what I mean? When those types of roots get plugged in there, and it could be any, I mean, family isn't blood. Family isn't always blood. You know what I mean? I have so many family to me that are not my blood. And those types of relationships where we complement the growth of each other, all reaching for the same light, all giving room for everybody to have access to chase the same light. We do grow stronger together. The relationship that you have with El Patron, that's inspiring because that shows he pours into you, you pour into him, and that is something that we get inspired to because we understand, look, these are two others that are doing similar work and just trying to make people be better at being them. The one, 100%, you are alone, your own brand. I, I bring my own brew to the table. Right. One million percent. That's the car guy. He does his, his thing. <laughs> he is him, right? Yeah. And I need Fred to be 100% his He's way. yin to my yang. I need to be a 100% me. You need to be 100% you. And when we actually get the opportunity to be people that not only be an example of us being the best us, but we find and tap to that thing that says, hey, we're growing too, so grow with us. We're coming up too, so grow with us. It, it, it makes and implores that other one that's growing mm. too to grow as well. So when seeing those root systems, I saw one is, is twisted around a bigger tree and this other one is twisted around another one, but this one is growing here. And you can even, if you take the time to look at it, you'll see this one was able to grow because this one's light, this one moved over just a little bit and allowed light to let this one go up. And I know that goes deeper. I'm not exactly much of a small talker. I am a deep to deep type of conversation guy. He is. That's why I connect with customers. I'll get deep inside of their heart. He's right. You know, but then you got the roots that are shallow and the, the people that are shallow and those roots will not ever be part of that. And you'll, and those are, those get exposed so quick. So those easy. pull right out of the ground so easy. They're so, they, the wind knocks those them down. Those are weeds. Those are, the, weeds exactly. are very shallow. So when you rooted. find the deep rooted people, those are the ones, you know, and, and that's let me, what you, let me tell you something. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. There's a text that I texted this morning. Yeah. Okay. And so this text says, I'll tell you what it says. This is, a, this is that, uh, okay. Oh, Patron. One of my millions of texts that we go back and forth. Millions. <laughs> okay. But I want to make a point here of a, of a real text. I, and this is, this is un, un, you know, you know, unscripted, whatever. And uh, it says, I love you, man, so much. So much life that I have. And I, and I keep forgetting about how much life that I have. You know what I mean? Like, in other words, I'm 48 years old. And, and I'm not old or nothing. But, but again, you know, I am 48. And, uh, and so the coronavirus came and everyone's hurting. And, uh, you know, I just lost my mom on December 5th, right? December 17th, my wife and I had split up after 20 years, right? So, you know, when you, you know, and, and then everything's hitting me. And then all of a sudden a pandemic comes. And, and again, so it was this one storm after another and, and it just doesn't go away and this cloud just doesn't leave, right? And, um, and as much as I'm on there on social media, Say, so I love you, man. So much love, so much uh, life left, uh, and I keep forgetting uh, that, I, that, that I'm living. I said, I'm glad that I have met you, your family, but I want you, want you to keep going. When I'm in heaven someday, I will tell everyone about you there, too. Hmm. I said, thank you. Hmm. And then I put visionaries. Now, I don't think you see it. And then he put a heart on that. And then my point to you is, what we say out of our mouth, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, I'm talking about being real. That's right. I'm talking about real. When you have something real to say, say it. Because you only got a short time left. Boom. You got a short time left. Mm-hmm. I need a mic. I need a mic to drop for you. <laughs> you, might as well, you might as well get it out now, because um, this is it, man. One life, one opportunity, mm-hmm. right? One shot, right? Eminem, he That's said it. Right. You know it. 
Mom's spaghetti. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. My arms are heavy, whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> my arms are sweaty. I don't know, whatever. I don't know. Um, so, so my point to you is uh, we have a relationship unlike any other. And, and I'll say this, we've been together for three years. We've, we've traveled the world. We've, um, we're, we're, we FaceTime four or five, six, seven times a day. We speak to each other all day. But when we talk, we talk about strategies, movements, uh, movements, strategies. Um, we don't talk about today. We talk about tomorrow. Mm-hmm. If we talk about today, today's almost over. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah. We got to talk about tomorrow. So we always continue to keep talking about it because that's what you have to live for. Because if you don't have nothing to live for for tomorrow, it's not living. You're not mm-hmm. living. See, so the idea is, is not whether you're really going to make that happen. The idea is to be a visionary and keep the vision going. Someday the lights will go out. And they're going to go out for everybody. everybody. There's been a virus that's going around. And it's been going around since mankind. And that's called death. And you have a very short time <laughs> to do what you guys do. Yep. And um, I've seen so many young people leave this world. And, and, I, and, and I say to myself, I wish I could just let them take, uh, take my heart out and let them have my lung. Because I've done it all. You know, I've lived in a million and a half dollar home. I've had nice cars. I made a lot of money. I was salesman a month every month. I mean, I, I won everything. I, I, I went on all these trips. I've done so much. And then I see people who have nothing. And, um, and I love giving. And, uh, I learned the power of giving. And, um, I learned, I learned how unbelievable it feels, um, to, to watch somebody um, who's never had something received. And when you see that face, mm-hmm. so that's my why. That's, that should be your why. That's, that's your why, man. Because when you, when you do these good things, say good things and mean them here. Yeah. Mean them here. You're going to go much further. And then you're going to get haters. You're going to have to deal with it. Yes, you because, do. You got to love the haters, too. You got to show the haters love. I mean, the Bible says, "Love your enemies," and it's like reaping. But you don't have to. You don't have to give them thumbs up. Or, <laughs> yeah, like or this, but you could definitely. You, you know, you don't. I say, if you have haters, if you, if, then you're doing something good because that means you're you're out there doing something that makes them feel like they're they're not doing enough, so they're going to hate on you. And it, they they feel uncomfortable. It's that whole thing, like I was talking about earlier. People don't like being uncomfortable, so when you make them uncomfortable they tend to hate on that instead of just going with it like we would. Somebody like, you know, somebody like me, somebody throws hate at me, it's, it's going to make me just say, I'm going to go harder, you know. And I appreciate you saying that, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, J- Jason, man, I'm going to get to the second question. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Great. The challenge, the spirit of the challenge. Brother, that's more powerful stuff right there, and I think that a lot of people can understand that. I think, cause like you said, a lot of people can say family and stuff, because I do. I'll say family, too. But at the same time, deep down, it's the competitor in me. It's the it's that challenger in me, the guy who likes to be, the, like you said, salesman of the month every month. Family is your responsibility. Family yeah. is your responsibility. Yeah, you have a responsibility to your family. So you better get your ass up and get to work anyway. You know, and, <laughs> and make, making that family work is, is a challenge also. Yeah. There, is, there is a challenge that's a, that's a whole, to keeping a home working. And, and that's, that's, that's part that's of it too. Something that keeps that's why you, people motivated. That's why, a, a, you know? that's why a, a, never mind. I won't even get into that. So anyway, second, sure. second question I have for you, Jason, is, um, you know, I know that you've been in this biz for a long time. You know, what, what made you say, I want to get into the car business when you were a young man, when you were like, you know what, this is, this is what I'm going to do. What made you make that decision? Um, so what made me get into the, in the car business? I was uh, 16 years old. Um, 16 actually, and uh, I'm deaf, I'm hard of hearing, and I was beat up in school uh, from the time I was uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I was beat up, and on my 16th year, right, my mom gave me permission to go beat up a kid in school. So she asked me to go beat up the kid that was picking on me, and I told my mother that I would go to school, and um, I'll, I'll fight the kid, but 
I don't know if I'm going to win, and, um, and but I'm going to go fight him. Well, I had the opportunity because the kid was lying down in the hallway, and uh, and it was a perfect shot. It was a field punt. It was a football punt, and um, he was lying down in the hallway, and he was he was on there, and and I wind up and I ran and I kicked him in the head. Okay, <laughs> so this is the kid that ripped the hearing aids out of my ears, oh. that, that threw me in a dumpster. This is the kid that threw me in the dumpster with all of his friends watching who mm-hmm. took spaghetti and dumped the trays of spaghetti and food on me while the people laughed and did their thing on me. This is the kid that used to grab my hair in school when I had it. Um, used to, you know, he probably loved to grab it now. You know what? I love everybody to grab it now. But, but the kid grabbed me around and bullied me for years and years and wouldn't stop. Right? Mm-hmm. So this is the day where I finally knocked him out. And, uh, and when I did... Um, the school kicked me out, but when they kicked me out for one week, they gave me one week out of school suspension. I wasn't kicked out permanently. Then they, booked, they had me come back to school, and when they had me come back, what they did for me then was all the teachers, I want you to learn this lesson, okay? All the teachers were sitting around, and my uncle was listening. And my uncle was a multimillionaire, right? Mm-hmm. He was very smart. And, and by the way, he knew the principal because all of his kids are doctors. Okay, <laughs> and, and those kids were very bright kids in the school. Okay, and that and that principal knew it. So when my uncle sat there with me, right, the rough guy, right, the outcast, right, because I'm not the the son of him, but I'm the but I but I, I did grow up by him. So what he did was he and I'm going to teach you this lesson right now, and I hope you all learn from this one. And I'm going to learn from this in the car business right now. <laughs> Ready? Yep. He said. Ready. All the teachers are sitting around the table. And the principal says to to each one of the teachers, Teachers, should we allow Jason to come back to school and and be a part of our school? Can you all give can you all do me a favor and tell tell uh, what you think about Jason? And each teacher said, Jason, ah he's noisy, he he talks too much. He talks too much. He talks too much. Next one said, Ah, he's disruptive he's disruptive in class. The next one said, oh, I love him. He's a sweetheart. next one said, I love him. He's great. And I went around like 12 teachers, right? And then my uncle said, are you done? Are you all done? And they're all looking at my uncle, right? And then my, are you done? Now I'm going to ask you a question. How long have you known to each teacher? He did what he said. How long did you know that my nephew was getting picked on? Answer the question. And the teacher said, one year. And the next teacher said, three years. And the next teacher said, two years. And the next teacher said, four years. And they kept saying, all the years. And if it was your damn kid, then why are you allowing it? Mm -hmm. You're allowing it. You allowed my son, my nephew, to get picked out in your school, which is supposed to be a learning place, for a safe place for my son to be. Mm-hmm. And you you just admit it in front of me. Mm. Jason, get your shit and let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Where am right. I going? That was my last day of school. Yeah. And he quit. <laughs> he quit for me. Right? <laughs> I had to go get my GED. I said, what do you want me to do? I got into the car business, cleaning cars. There you oh. Go. Oh. I was a good kid. I was a good kid. Listen, I was a good kid. I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't in drugs. I wasn't in there. I don't know. I was a good kid. I'll tell you how good I was. 17 years old, 16 years old. I got my GED, like I said. I immediately went to a dealership. I started cleaning cars. I got excited about it. This guy's like showing me how to do it. Now, remember, I'm a young kid, so it was interesting. 18, 19, 20. I become a prep manager. I become an up. I become a manager of the department of the dealer, right? And then my uncle says, you know what? Why don't you clean cars for yourself? I'm like, no way. He's like, he's like, how much do they ch- ch- pay you at the dealer? I said, 12 bucks an hour. He goes, well, that's eight hours. You're going to make 96 bucks, right? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, how much do they charge for the detail? He goes, I go, 125. And he goes, so how many do you do a day? I go, three. He goes, well, how much is that? 375. So wouldn't you rather make 375 a day than <laughs> 12 bucks an hour? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, 
Yeah. How am I going to do it? Right? He goes, you're going to go knocking on people's doors, and you're going to ask them if they want their car clean, you're going to ask them to do it, and you're going to clean the car on the driveway. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. I started a mobile unit. I had a beat-up little 626 Mazda with a horse trailer. <laughs> <laughs> One year, I had a brand-new truck, box truck, right? Beautiful truck. Let it all out, yeah. right? It just started growing. One detail shop, two detail shops, three detail shops, four detail shops, right? And I had several people working for me. And, and, we, and I built this, like, empire of cleaning cars for years and years. And I learned so much on cleaning cars. I learned the eye. I had the eyes for paint. Mm. And I learned about the eye of paint. And a lot of people don't know what that means. And it was, mm. can you paint out? Tell me if it's been painted or not painted. Can you look at a car and tell me if it's been cleaned? If, if, it, if it, you know, if it was vomited, if it was actually detailed? When you, when you get into a car, you can, you'll figure it out. But anyway, my point is, the next step I get into is, I go on Craigslist and I start, you know, I, I, I start buying these vehicles, right? Because Craigslist came out, and I started buying cash, right? I took them over to the auction, and I was making money on them. Then I started buying a bunch of them. Like, oh, my God, this is great, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, my uncle said, you know what, Jason? He says, you've got to get into car sales. I said, car sales? you kidding me? I'm deaf. I'm thinking, nobody's going to hear it. I can't hear what they're saying. He goes, you know what else? He goes, just do what they want you to do. And I'm like, really? So... So, I tell you, right? So, I get into car sales. What? <laughs> I get into car sales. <laughs> I love it. Look at that. Yeah. Two kids yeah. full of them bad boys. Look at the clacks. He's winning. I, I just keep winning. winning. Get you some of that. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> He's winning. And the blocks keep coming. And every month I just keep winning. And I kept winning and winning and winning. And some people ask you, how do you, how do you stay in the car business, right? How do you do it? How do you do it? And how did I do it? What happened was I got addicted to do it. <laughs> because what happened was once I started winning, when I was a young, I, I was a kid out of school who made nothing. I started making some mad money selling cars. Mad money, right? And, and I did it every month. I was selling in a month. Every single month. If I didn't win, I was on vacation. Right? <laughs> we on vacation sometimes I won. And that's, that's the sad right. part. That's right. Yeah. That's, the, that's, that's the real car guy right there. Yeah. Now, so, 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 that's, so you ask how I did it and why. So then I get into car sales. And then I did that for years. And one day I said, you know what? I got into social media really heavy in 04, 05, 06, 07. In 07, it really took off. 08, 09. You know, in social media, it's not about just what's on the camera. It's not I mean uh, uh, Facebook. This has to do with YouTube. This yeah. has to do with videos. And this has to do with camera, getting yourself in front of it. Social media. It does not just mean, it, it doesn't mean Facebook alone. Yeah. It, 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 it's the camera. It's it's social media. <laughs> okay. okay. So I got heavy into it. And I got I got great in front of that camera. And the better I got, the more money I started making. And the more people were coming into the dealership to see me without having to stand outside. And then one day I said, you know what? I'm gonna operate in the world, the number one Facebook pages in the world. And I did. And I operated the number one most engaged automotive Facebook pages in the United States. And when I did that, I got the paper out. I, I had it, got it somewhere, but oh, here it is. I want you to pay attention to this. Let's see how good you guys are on social media. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Organic, paid. Post, the reach. You guys know what reach means? Yeah, yeah. So what is the reach on that? How many people organic? Organic. How many does that say? 392,646. Wow. How many people like that post? How many people like that post? 4,904. Wow. How many people shared it? 
6370. Holy cannolis, Batman. Wow. How many people commented on it? It's 4235. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yes, wow. sir. Wow. Those are very, very good numbers, and I do know exactly what those numbers are about. They're not bad. They're not too bad, Jason. It must have been a Wednesday or something. Social media is word driven by the word engagement. Engagement. That's the only thing you're on social media for is the word engagement. How many people like, share, and comment? And the main thing, the main thing you better get is the share. If you like it, good for you. I'm glad you like my stuff. Right, good, right, right. But the more the more influential it is, the share is what you're looking for. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what I'm telling you, because what I'm going to tell you anyway. Don't worry about it, subprime hero, because because we're going to be getting together anyway. After this coronavirus, Louis, we're going to get together anyway. We're going to sit down. We're going to show you this stuff anyway, because then I invented next sale. Yeah, and that's what I invented next sale. That's why I invented next sale. Oh man! Well, I'm even to hold on to that next cell. Please hold on to the next cell app. We got to continue getting through this five liner. We got a certain time for you to go ahead and plug into yeah, the next cell. But next cell will take up an entire session, folks. So we got to yeah. get through this five liner. Yes. Jason is dropping yeah. some good stuff and making this conversation easy. Yeah, we're at the two right here. Jason, Sometimes that might be all you need. That's it. So the, <laughs> that's a two liner. And and honestly, you know. This is such good information, and I and I love it. I love that you're giving us such a good deep story about where you're coming from. I, I love Thank that you. the question I just asked about what got you in the biz brought up all that stuff because that's what this is about. The show's t- speaking of organic. The show is organic. It's yeah. it's that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to bring out the or- organic in people. And so that being said, you know, being being that you've been in the business, you've you've done so many different things. And part of the business, whether it be being a, a detailer at a store when you were young, to owning your own detail shop, to, to getting into the business and selling cars and then coming up with the next sale and next review and so on. So we can keep going on about your, your resume and, and all the accolades I could put by your name, um, which is great, man, because you've earned every one of those. You know? so, but when you were in this business, I'm sure there's been people that you – like I'd say that you're an influence to me, right? I'm saying that El Patron is an influence to me. I'm saying that there's, there's people out there. For you, I'm sure there was somebody that when you were coming up in this game, when you, you, you mentioned some people already, but there was somebody that made you go, that's, that's the influence for me. That's what I, I see what he's doing. I want to be a person like that. Who would that person be or who would those persons be, I should say? Um, so in the, in the car business, you mean? Like, like so usually the – the way somebody would pick somebody for this, because I'm sure you've had a lot of people influence you. you, you yeah, you've been hard to name We've had a lot it's of like being an award and be like, I want to thank. There's only one person. So with, with us, I picked the person that was pivotal, the one that first said, you can do this, and I believe in you, and I'm going to sow into you and train you. And the person that would be mainly responsible for the first bit of training. Sounds like his uncle would have been his person. biggest influence yeah, so when it comes to, a, to that, to me. Yeah. So I, sh- I guess I should say, since you've been in the business, who in the business has lifted you up? I guess I should say that. Somebody that said, boom. Um, I, w- I definitely wouldn't be where I am unless I had this uh, person. You know what? Exactly. You know, everyone's going to say who they're going to say. Uh, and I, all right, so, you know, again, I'm very strategic about how these questions are being different because I'm, I'm trying to think deeper. I, I, I always go in deep. Go deep. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will go back to say that my uncle was there for me growing up as a father, as a parent, who guided me. But I, I think my biggest influencer in the world was somebody that I know that didn't have a lot of money. I don't want to mention their name or their life and their whatever. It was somebody that that didn't have anything at all, who doesn't still to this day have anything at all. Um, he influences me uh, to be a better person, and, and um, not because not because of mm-hmm. of um, not because um, again this goes deep. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a guy, there's a guy that, that I'm friends with and we're best friends and, and I don't bring his name up and say, and nothing, you know, and I feel, and he knows he, himself. He knows, he knows who it is, yeah. He knows. He knows, he knows himself. We had a talk today or yesterday, um, you know, about his life and, and, um, and, you know, and, you know, as I was growing up throughout the years, just, this guy's been here, um, 
to tell me, oh my God, you're, you're kicking ass, man. And only what you're doing is incredible. It's genius what you're doing. And, 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 um, and everybody else said, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And even my uncle, who has been there for me, would say, what are you doing? Right? And I remember when I said, I'm going to build an app, right? And he said, you're going to build an app. And my uncle's like, you're going to build an app. You're not building no app. I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not, you know, my uncle's like, got mad at me because he's not into that digital stuff. He hates social media. He's almost 80 years old. He hates it. And he always said, you're not doing it. I'm going to build an app. Four months later, I got a half a million bucks in my bank account. Right? So, so, um, so from that app. So I'm not, you know, next day didn't hurt me. Uh, you know, right. that, that app didn't hurt me in four months. Matter of fact, I shocked him. So it, the, the influencer I got is somebody that I shock, and I keep shocking them. Yeah. And, and and it, it it's somebody that 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 it's it, it's somebody that, that I get to see their face and reaction who tells me the real truth and hits me with the with with real answers and it hits me up with with um with 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 um rebuttals and and hits me up with um stuff that I'm gonna do wrong and and and, and he's one that that lives a simple life and he, and he won't go any step further and he won't take a chance to move forward. He influences me to jump even further. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I feel you on that, Jason. That's, that's good. That, the, is, that is, it, deep. is deep. Very deep. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you don't take a chance. We don't take this chance. We just will never know. And, and I said to him, you can't fail. Listen, listen to me. What does failing mean? I can tell you I lived in a mobile home. I lived in a trailer park. Who cares? I lived in an apartment. Yeah, yeah. I can. I can. I mean, I live in a million and a half dollar home. Great. Thank you for shit. But I live in a condo now. You know, up in upstate New York. I'm stuck up here till I get down to Florida, my home in Florida. But, but again, listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you live or what it is. It matters. All that matters is, is again, it, so many people weigh on the money. And you're, you're a real influencer is a person that will give you real feedback, real feedback. Mm. And, and that will give you, if he gives you the real feedback, then you're going to have to figure out the answers, the challenge to get through that feedback. And so over the years, he asked me the question, and it was a good one. It was so damn good. <laughs> but, yeah. And so his questions were so good. And I didn't have an answer. And I just had to go do it. And then I came back with the answer. And as the years went on and on, um, I made a lot of money in that time. And that's my influence. My influence is somebody that pushed me indirectly, not pat me on the back like my family, my buddy, or, or some, right. somebody that says, you know, gives a quote. You know, the quotes are, quotes are great, okay? Listen to me, uh, quotes are great, inspiration is great, um, uh, motivation is great. But as soon as you pop that damn balloon, it goes like that anyway, okay? So you, it, it can pop in two seconds. You've been to a dealership, right? And the manager starts, you know, get you all going. It's Saturday morning, guys, right? we got to have a great day, right? Then all of a sudden you go up to the sales desk and he says, what do you got? What do you got? What are you doing? <laughs> you don't got a deal for me? Come on, come on, go out, right? So that's the same guy that just had the meeting about an hour ago. That was just motivating everybody. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all had those type of managers, right? So my, my inspiration is somebody that pushed me indirectly, um, that, that wasn't full of shit, and that's the kind of that's, – that's, that's what I needed to go forward. And, and like you say, everyone's going to need that to go. You're going to need that push. And you're going to need a real push. And you're going to have to have answers to all these questions. And those, and some of those questions are, are not generic questions, but the more detailed questions. So that was basically it uh, on that end of it, you know. Yeah. No, it makes it makes so sense. And when you say it gets deep, that is true. You know, you know, an influencer, somebody that influences you can be somebody that, like an unspoken person, just people in general that that give you the truth, you know, that, that tell you, you know, hey, you know, it's great, but this or whatever it is. And I, and I, and I, I respect that from people. I do. I honestly respect the honesty from people, not just the, like you said, the, 
good old boys and you know or the fake people who are like yeah man your show's great and we, it's it's awesome when you got a lot of money when you have a lot of money listen pay attention to the people that are influencers online yeah like when they all got so much money right everybody's like oh my god he's so great oh my god he's the best oh you're the best and go down and look at his post he makes a post he gets 700 likes and nobody knows anything about him he doesn't do anything but talks about money 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 <laughs> yeah. Everybody's influenced on money, 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 money. Okay? But when you got cancer and you're laying there and you're in your damn bed. Money ain't doing nothing for you. I promise yeah. you that money won't be worth it. You won't be right. sitting there. Okay? And I promise you, all those likes don't mean shit. No. Okay? No. At the end no. of the day, money, people are driven by money. Right. You want to be driven by money? Then you're, then you're in the wrong, then you're in the wrong deal. The, the dealership today, we're, we're not in it, man. I'm sorry. I'm not driven by money. You don't have to show me your Rolls Royce. I don't give a shit what you're right. driving. Right. I don't care what you're driving. I don't care about your plane. I don't care about your, your, your I don't care about none of it. I don't care about your <laughs> house. I don't care about your seven bedrooms. I don't care about your nine bedrooms. Right? I care about you. You. Right. right. Yeah. Especially car guys. We definitely don't genuine, care about what you're genuine. driving. We I'm, see cars all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, cars are, they're cool. They're, they're fun, but they come and go. Just like anything else, after five years, it's not cool anymore. And, so, like, you're right. It's 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 about the realness. So somebody can have money. Somebody can be, um, the, you know, have all that. Can have a Maybach. Can have this. Can have the, the ten-room house with the pool in the back that's got the cave and, you know, the grotto where you – well, anyway, you can have all that kind of stuff. And you, But if you come on the camera and you're just real with people, you're not sitting there just like, check out my, my Maybach. Check out my airplane. It's – but you just talk to people and you just say, hey – yeah, man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I got this, but this is just because I genuinely care and I, and I want to help people. You know, one guy that I do respect that we know has tons of money, it's Tony Robbins, you know. And this guy, he's, he's a great influencer. He loves to help people. He's a motivator. He has all this stuff, but he doesn't sit there and talk about how much money he has ever. Never. And, I, and I know this dude's net worth is amazing. Never. Amazing. They are the, all, all, the, all the wealthiest people in the world, even the wealthiest people in the world, don't get on there. They have their jeans on. Don't talk about their money. Flash, they, don't talk about, they don't even talk about talk about their money. They don't flash their cars. They don't flash anything. People that flash stuff, they have a insecurity problem, right? So you're getting ready to talk to somebody that has an insecurity problem. <laughs> sorry, and that's that's why I think what, what you sorry sorry to interrupt you, but that's why I think the relationship that you have. With the person that was that's so instrumental to you is that this person wasn't impressed by your money, your success, the things that you did. They weren't impressed by the great relationships that you had, what you drove up into, um, how great you were you were successful in your business. That didn't Never impress all time. You know Never all time. Never and, and, time. And that is that is a real relationship with somebody that's solid. And that, that person that's usually that solid with you is going to do one of two things. They're either, they're either going to um, actually leave some sort of a stain on you. I mean, we're sitting at a table here. Fred made this entire table, okay, custom-made table that we're sitting at here in the cafe. Fred made it. And there's so much of an application process that's occurred inside of that that, that in order to get this table even to the place where it could carry a stain, it had to be sanded a certain way. And to have people inside of our lives that can be a sandpaper that can rub up against us and it might shave away what we wanted to keep. It might actually be scathing and hurt us. Having those types of relationships with people are the only way that they leave you smooth enough or prepared enough to even receive a mark, to, to let this stain go yeah. in. I remember the process of him going through it. Oh, man, I need to resand this other spot over here so I can put that stain down. You know what I mean? And, he, and there was so much fun and passion that he put into creating this. But the process of it was still, it was not ready for what it was going to do yet until it had the application of a hard sandpaper that then took away the parts of it that didn't belong there and then revealed uh, what was the best potential, and that's what great relationships do. They are. They keep and you they humble. Keep you there. Yes, they humble you every time. And so, like, because we we all can get there. We all can like get so much grace from people and praise, and you're like, man, I am the shit. You know, <laughs> like really, you feel that way, and it's okay to feel that way because you should. You should have a little bit of self confidence, self confidence in you, right? But there's something about having confidence. a friend that'll pop that balloon for you. Poof, hey dog, sit back down at this chair. You just you're just a human being. And you and you have a lot of growth still left in you. So, 
I and mean, that's a friend when they're not wrapped around you because of that moment. Right, and that's you how know you know I mean? really quick, yeah. Yeah. And, and I can appreciate that, and, and I'm glad that you have somebody like that in your life, Jason, because we all need one like that, and I'm, and you know, so that's really cool. And I can tell you're the kind of guy that would give that realness to us, too. Like, if I, if I talk to you and say, hey, man, what would you think about this? You'd be like, man, that shit sucked, right? <laughs> or you'd be like, man, that was really awesome, or, hey, you could have tweaked this. You would just give me a real answer. You wouldn't give me the... the, the <laughs> If I don't give you the real answer, you're not going to be able to fix it. That's exactly it. That's exactly your, your word is useless to us. If I don't get the real you, then what, what am that's I talking point. to you that's for? That's the point. We don't have time. So we all need we those, we need those people in our lives. We have a bullshit conversation right now. And that's what 90% of the world does all day long. They have bullshit conversations all day long. Uh, because and it's anecdotal and it's not productive. You're not going to get real answers. No. Right. That's right. That's why we try to ask real questions. It's hard to fake a good kind of Ten minutes ago, they, they just learned it, and all of a sudden, they're the best at it. I love it. Every time, every time. <laughs> truth, truth, but, uh, truth. Just, just to finish off, before he goes to his uh, third question. Fourth question. And, fourth question, sorry. I, uh-oh, mine's coming up. Yeah, we're so, moving. Car guys, car guys, listen, there's a big fundamental difference for you chasing money and you doing great works that has money chasing you. Hmm. There is a completely different so flow in the, the way that you approach life. When you're chasing the money, it is very obvious and real people can see it. Whether you're a kid from the street or you're a car dog that really knows how to read people, you know when person, a person's chasing money or when they actually have real content. And unfortunately, some people that are very shallow, it's very easy for them to, like the Bahamas, it, get uprooted. It's, it's very easy for them to get uprooted. <laughs> but for, for those that are actually shallow and you can see down into the, those treasures get picked up easily. There's nothing after that. After what was left there by accident, those treasures are gone. There's no deep to go into. And so people like Jason, people like El Patron, people like the rest of the solutionaries from the last series, those are people that actually have content. Those are the, We are talking to people that are actually trying to find a way to help somebody. His app is not just so that he can do well in life. He's already done well in life, folks. Jason is already doing great. He's providing something, and his answer for people has been to give it to dealerships for free so that they can build their business. Mm-hmm. And we'll get back. I'll we'll get, get back to I'm spilling the beans. I don't want to spill so the I'm beans. Gonna get, I'm going gonna get, I'm gonna to get a little bit kind of outside of this whole, you know, talking about influencers and talking about the business. I want to ask something more personal from you. Mm-hmm.